Hey everybody, Joe here, and this is legitimately my seventh or eighth attempt at recording a video. Uh, I've just been all over the place, and I just cannot seem to find uh, momentum in order to carry me through from start to finish. I already feel half tempted to kill this video right now and start over, but I'm gonna try to resist the urge. In all my other videos, I've been hopscotching between OCPs and the different suspenses that are coming down this year, uh, how I'm wearing ABUs, and in about one year's time, we'll be laying these bad boys to rest uh, forever. I bounce between that and the Rona, uh, which has been turning everybody's lives upside down. Uh, I am essential, my wife is essential. We've been alternating going to work and staying at home with the boy. Uh, I've been moved from client systems to the Cyber Operations Center, which is like our CFP here, but because Scott is such a expansive base, we have like 30 something mission partners, about a populace of 14, 15,000 people, and there's only like nine of us. So we don't CFP like other bases do. Uh, we just take in the tickets, take in the phone calls, and we, I try to identify patterns, diagnose things before they get too out of hand. And then we send everything out to the back shops and you know let them do what they are trained to do. Uh, I definitely learned my lesson, and I wanna, I do wanna share something to any brand new officers out there. Do not be suckered into the allure of having your own office, of having your own walls and your own door. Uh, when I was a senior airman in Alaska, uh, Captain Ritter had a stand-up desk, and I was like, I want a stand-up desk. And you could play your own music in there, and I was like, I, I, would, I would most certainly like that. Nine, 10 hours at work, I would like to just have a little bit of metal blaring in the background to help me go through my day. But being in an office here, it, it, it segregated me from my airmen. And uh, I missed out on uh, learning a lot of what they do by being in my own little closet, being my, in my own little dungeon. So the, the lesson I learned is to avoid that temptation and sit out there with your people. I should have sat out on the floor with my NCOs, watched him watch them handle the airmen, watch them distribute jobs, watch them do what it is that they do. Because in the PSYOC, that's what I'm doing. I'm sitting here, I have a staff sergeant here, I have airmen over there, and we're all in the thick of it together. Now, I'm not really supposed to be in the weeds as a lieutenant, but I, I'm, still, I'm still expecting myself to get my hands dirty. And I think uh, when I was enlisted, I liked seeing that in officers. Now, I know being on this side that we got other things going on and we need to trust our people when they're getting their hands dirty to you know, get the job done and get it done correctly. And I do, but I also wanna know what the hell they're doing and I wanna be able to help in some shape or form. And so being out on the floor with them and interacting with customers and watching them interact with customers and eavesdropping on everything that they do, it shows me everything that they do and it's educating me. And the past couple months since I got moved in there, have been the most rewarding few months that I've had since I became an officer. And I, I feel pretty shitty that I didn't learn this lesson soon enough when I was with the CSTs. But hopefully uh, a learned lesson is, it's still a lesson learned. So hopefully people are receiving some benefit of that. So with all this going on, I am going through a med board, something I was not anticipating. I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease a few years ago. I mean, it took a few years to get there. I had a few ER visits when I was in Keesler and it took a little while to determine what it was uh, after GERD and gastritis and God knows what else. Uh, I went to the ER again and I guess I just got the right provider that day because a few things must have lined up and he was like, I think I know what that is. Ran the right tests, looked for the right stuff and now here we are after a couple colonoscopies and EGDs and a blood marker test that is pretty conclusive, whether you have UC or Crohn's, after all that, the Air Force is like, oh, so you have Crohn's. That's like a boogeyman term or something. It's an automatic med board. I was notified of this in the middle of a mobility exercise. I'm sitting there in the UCC and I get an email from my new Peblo, my new liaison in the med group that uh, I'm going through a records review and uh, that was awesome. That was just, that was just great. And now we're going through all this and it's, it's at AFPC now. So 
you get your records reviewed by your providers and everything, it goes to a, a working group, a local working group, it's called the DAWG, D-A-W-G. And they determine one way or the other, return them to duty or like send this case forward for further review. And then that's a recommendation, not so much a determination. Their recommendation was then sent to AFPC, to um, the Medical Retention Standards uh, Work Center, I guess, DP2NP. And they said, non-concur, please do a full MEB for gastroenterology. So, past couple weeks have been filled with VA visits to pension and compensation. And I've been talking with the Airman and Family Readiness Center and getting taps going as best I can because uh, everything's closed or kanked out due to social distancing and everything. So we're uh, doing a lot of this over telephone. But talking about being separated or being retired, and it's still up in the air. It's, it's at AFPC, my records are being reviewed before it goes to the informal board. And if I don't like the results of that, I could take it to a hearing and request a formal board we're not even there yet, you know? Everything's still up in the air, but I'm talking with TAPS people like I am being retired or I am being separated. And it is just working wonders on me right now. And uh, I don't know what's gonna happen. And that's that's kind of scary. Now, I'm, I'm in a better boat than maybe other people. I have Security Plus. I have a clearance. Those are things that are sort of desired on the outside. Uh, my my stepbrother, he's out at uh, Fort Meade. He knows some things. And um, he's like, you know, hey, out here, th those those things are desired. You get a poly, and then, and then you're in there like swimwear. You're good to go. Did I say that right? You're in there like swimwear? Okay, whatever. So I... I can still fall back on something on the outside. I, I have things that are still desired. I'm not totally SOL, but I hit 14 years on the 25th. And in the same month that I hit my Air Force anniversary, I'm probably gonna be told that um, I'm no longer needed. Now, if it doesn't work out that way, if they're like, oh no, you're fine, RTD, I don't know. I, I've I've been coming to grips with it slowly. I've been reconciling with this this entire time. Depending on if they uh, deduce that I am disabled in some form or fashion, I mean, I don't know what'll happen. But uh, it's it's beaten me up and it's beaten me down. And with this, on top of everything else, like I was supposed to go see my in-laws for my wife's birthday. Her and uh, her sister are a day apart. I mean, they're seven years apart, but their birthdays are a day apart. So we were gonna go down there, hang out with her folks for a few days. And I was gonna go to South Carolina to retire an old friend of mine from Alaska. And uh, I was like, well, there's a sign from God. I'm not gonna get my own retirement ceremony, but at least I get to sit in a chair next to somebody who's retiring. But because of uh, the stop movements and everything, none of that, happened or is going to happen. But this is still happening. I, I messaged AFPC on Facebook a couple weeks ago just to make sure like, hey, are we still doing this? And they were like, yep, yeah, all that stuff is still going. And sure enough, um, I, I went to my VA appointments like I was supposed to. My Peblo called me up last week. I met up with them on Friday to see if uh, I wanted to add a letter of exception. I said everything I needed to say already in the same letter that my commander added on to. We both said, like, Crohn's has not affected me going to work at all. I, I've gone to quarters. I've gone to the doctor and gone on quarters for the flu and for, like, cold-like symptoms more often than for Crohn's. But, and it's, it's my, my provider was, like, he, he literally said, Freudian slip, he was like, you don't, you don't even have real Crohn's, you know? Because it's, it's very mild. All I need is, is, some, is some medication. And they're not, not even the biologics, not injections or anything. It's just a proton pump inhibitor and an anti-inflammatory. I got to monitor my diet, stay away from the high residue, high fiber stuff, because that's, that's what causes the problems. That's what started the problems is trying to eat healthy. 
You know, I, I got back from OTS, partied a little bit, ate like garbage, and that was fine. It was pizza and, and Burger King, you know, whatever. But then I was like, all right, got to get my ass back in gear. Grilled chicken, broccoli, corn, and then a couple days, and salads. And a couple days later, I was in the ER because I had blockages and these things don't digest very well at all. Corn is notorious for going in and coming out looking exactly the same. And that's that's why, because it, it, it's, it doesn't digest. My stomach, my, uh, my duodenum, my ileum, these different interfaces between my intestines and my other organs, it just, it just can't handle it. And that wasn't a thing five years ago. And now it's a thing. So I have a service related disability and I have a board of people that will determine whether I am sick enough to where I shouldn't be in uniform anymore. So we'll find out. If I am returned to duty though, just so happens that starting in May, the Space Force will be taking applications and volunteers from my career field as well as about a dozen or so others. So maybe we'll go Space Force for a while. Who knows? And I'll make some OCP videos about Space Force shit. I don't know. But uh, 14 years and there is the threat that the Air Force will be like, you're too sick to serve, but you're not sick enough to retire. So we're going to give you a severance package and separate you. We gonna fight that. If it comes down to that, my wife and I are both are like, no, no. So that's what's happening, and uh, it kind of sucks, but it's making me appreciate what I have, I guess. Anyway, uh, I just wanted to touch base, let y'all know what was going on. I'm sure people out there, they have med board stories, and if you are going through a med board, I can further uh, illustrate the process if, if you so desire. It's a learning process for me just as much though. So um, don't expect me to answer all your questions because I don't have any answers. Anyway, this is Joe. I'm gonna go get some Chick-fil-A and uh, wash your hands. <laughs> wash your hands, stay inside, play some Doom Eternal or in my case, uh, FF7 Remake. I got. Uh, I got the first class edition, so I got all this, I got the cool goodies, I got toys. I'm a 34-year-old man child. <laughs>